The other thing is that a man of conscience can never be a consensus leader. He doesn't take a stand in order to search for consensus. He's ultimately a molder of consensus. And I've always said that the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and moments of convenience, but where he stands in moments of challenge and moments of controversy. And I would take this position even if I didn't have a majority of people agreeing with me now. I first heard of Martin Luther King Jr. in 1955 when I was only 15 years old in the 10th grade. I heard his voice on the old radio. I had heard about Rosa Parks. And I tell you, the action of Rosa Parks, the words and leadership of Martin Luther King Jr. inspired me. I grew up at a time when I saw those signs that said, White waiting, colored waiting, white men, colored men, white women, colored women. The action of Rosa Parks, the leadership of Martin Luther King Jr. said that I could do something, that I could stand up, that I could change things. My mother, my father, my grandparents and great grandparents have told me over and over again when I would ask them questions about segregation and racial discrimination. They would say, boy, don't get in trouble. Don't get in the way. But Martin Luther King Jr. inspired me to stand up, to speak up, to speak out. And I was deeply moved to do something. I was so inspired by Dr. King that in 1956, at the age of 16, with some of my brothers and sisters and cousins, we went down to the public library trying to check out some books. And we were told by the librarian that the library was for whites only and not for colors. Dr. King changed my life. I got involved in the civil rights movement when I was only 18 years old. And because of his leadership, his dedication, I became a different person. I grew up by sitting down on lunch kind of stools, by sitting in in restaurants, by going on the freedom rides, by marching on Washington, by marching from Selma to Montgomery. If it hadn't been for Martin Luther King Jr., I don't know where I would be. He spoke up for me. He stood up for me. I spoke up for him. I stood up for him. He changed America. If it hadn't been for Dr. King, I don't know what would have happened to me personally, but I don't know what would have happened to America and to many of us. He broke down those signs that said white waiting, colored waiting, white men, colored men, white women, colored women. He made it possible to end segregation and racial discrimination in public accommodation, in theaters. He helped to make it possible for black men and black women to become registered voters in the American South, the 11 states of the old Confederacy from Virginia to Texas. Martin Luther King Jr. changed America forever. I was there with him when he spoke at the March on Washington, and I also spoke but he delivered that I have a dream speech that inspired a whole generation and still inspiring people today. And all across the world, people know about Martin Luther King Jr. They say we shall overcome in Europe, in Africa, in Central and South America, in Australia. Martin Luther King Jr. must be called one of the founding fathers of the new America. I feel more than lucky. I feel very blessed that I got to know this man. This one man changed the world. What he did and what he said. He talked the way of peace. He talked the way of love. The way of nonviolence. Our country is better. Our world is better. 
because Martin Luther King Jr. passed this way. I call him my friend, my brother, my hero, my leader. Thank you very much.